Hail Mary, full, full of grace, grace, the Lord is with thee. Blessed art thou among women, and blessed is the fruit of thy womb, Jesus. Holy Mary, Mother of God, pray for us sinners, now and at the hour of our death. Amen. In the name of the Father, the Son, and the Holy Spirit. Hello and welcome to another episode of Might. I am your host, Shane Page, on this, the official podcast of St. Michael Catholic Church, Gastonia. And I am joined today by two special guests. We have Principal Volman here to my right, and we have Charlie Sider. <laughs> With a T. With a T. <laughs> That's right. Uh, from Cross Catholic Outreach. That's and right. you've got some things you want to share with us uh, in a few minutes that I think are really important and our listeners are going to know about this. Before we do that, though, can I just take a moment to boast for a minute? Of course, boast away. And so, oh, so this this past Saturday we had our first Saturday communal devotion, and um, there's been first Saturdays have always been a part of the parish, but this one we it was a group of people along with Father's uh, encouragement to really let's focus on what Our Lady said for us to do, and it was phenomenal. I'm, and you know what the most moving part was? So we had the, the daughters of um, the Virgin Mary, mm -hmm. and um, they were here. And right after communion, they all led, they just began to sing a cappella, and it was amazing. Wow, hmm. that's absolutely beautiful. So, so if, if you did not, if you were not able to be here for the first Saturday, you've got to set your calendar for October the 1st. And be here. It was it was awesome. A couple of things though before we get into the conversation is that this week's a big week in the life of the parish. We've got faith mm -hmm. formation starting this this Sunday. We've got RCIA for those seeking maybe to become Catholic. Mm -hmm. That's coming up this Sunday, uh, this Sunday morning. And there was another thing. Youth group begins this coming Sunday. So if you are a family and you've registered your child for faith formation, please know it is this coming Sunday. If you're listening and you're thinking about becoming Catholic, we're going to have a very informal gathering uh, right here on the campus at about 1045 in the morning to get to know each other. This is just great things happening. But the last thing that I want to say is, is that everybody should save the date for September the 25th. I know Father announced it this past Sunday. We're going to be announcing it for the next uh, Sunday or two. But the feast day of our patron saint, St. Michael, is going to be on the morning here, September 25th. And it's going to be a celebration. I can't wait for it. You sound so excited. I know. <laughs> <laughs> no, it's going to be crazy. It is. I think the school is going to be doing something that whole School's week School's doing something. I think yeah. everybody is doing something that day. And most of it's going to be in the parish gym. Yeah. And uh, you can already see the banner that we're going to use for the 25th. It's a nice you know, we're going to be aligned. You know, everybody should be invested. You know, be transformed and be fully his, be fully God's. And that's going to be our guiding principle, you know, for, for the next, uh, well, for, for the long term. And the reason that came about is because of all the great growth we're seeing. Yeah. You know, then the question becomes, like, we've got all these people coming. We've got great things happening. How can we get everybody aligned to a common goal? Yeah. And so Father will say more about that, um, you know, as, as the days come on. But just so much happening here. Yeah. How are things going in the school very quickly? I mean, it's about, what, three weeks now we're, we're in. We've been doing daily mass. Yeah. From the principal's perspective, give everybody just a quick synopsis yeah um i could not have asked for a better start to the school year honestly uh, we have so many new families and we have so many new staff members so of course you know it's been a, a few hiccups here and there uh with all the new growth like you've been saying the school has seen a tremendous amount of new growth just as the church and i think uh, it kind of parallels, you know, we have a lot of new families at the church and I think a lot of those new families are choosing to send their children to St. Michael. So uh, it kind of makes sense that we're seeing, you know, the equivalent yeah. amount of growth and that's absolutely wonderful. Uh, no, we have new families joined though, haven't you, in the last month? Yes, uh, I gave a tour yesterday and I think their, her daughter is starting. How many students do you have now? Um, I want to say 165. 165. And last year you had how many? Uh, we ended at 125. Oh, wow. That's that's significant. Yes. That's more than 30%. Yes. 
Yes. That's great. Yeah. And uh, we had our first Friday celebration, our first First Friday celebration uh, before First Saturday. And it's not a new devotion. We did it all last year. But this year, uh, we've opened it up to our homeschool families. And mm. we had 26 additional students join us on Friday from the homeschooling community. So we got to feel what it would feel like to have over 200 students in the school. And you can feel it. <laughs> yeah, it, felt, it felt like a Sunday mass. It did. It felt like a Sunday mid-morning. 9 a.m. mass. It did. You know, and, and, and I don't want to belabor the point, but uh, some friends of mine are still not Catholic. Yeah. And so for some of them, they can't imagine like, church every day. Yeah. And um, so there was a time they would say, well, how many people come, you know, to these through the week uh, masses? And I said, you know, about 60 to 80. Yeah. But now I can say, well, about 200. Yeah. It's really phenomenal. And it's a great witness to the community about uh, what God is doing, and mm-hmm. it's uh, and it shows us you know the fidelity of the yeah. of the Catholic people yeah. and, and of the Catholic Church. And it feels so natural. I mean, of once we got into the routine of it, but it it doesn't even feel like this is something new that we've been doing. I mean, we've three weeks now, and the the students are being incredibly reverent. You know, it, there's no complaints, and just watching everyone in mass, it really is a beautiful, and I, I love starting the day with it, and even, you know, on days that we're not in school, it's now like, oh my gosh, I have to go to daily mass right. today. You know, you feel compelled to go because that's how we've been starting our, our day every morning. Um, so it feels really great. Yeah, it is. Well, it's great, great to have you here. Thank you. So uh, we have Charlie, and this was your idea to bring him on. <laughs> it was. It so, was. So tell tell me why uh, and what, what's significant about what he's going to talk about. Sure. Yes. Yeah. So I met Charlie last year, and I met him through Maria Boylan, who was our teacher who ran the Junior Beta Club here at St. Michael Catholic School. And he works for Cross Catholic Outreach, so they do a lot of service projects, which I won't steal his thunder, and I'll let him kind of go a little bit more into detail about that. Uh, but because our Beta Club is very into service and service projects, uh, she had worked with him and he is looking to hopefully uh, get involved with more of the schools in the diocese so this podcast is kind of a way we figured to um, one let people know what cross Catholic outreach is because before we worked with them I didn't even know what they were uh, and a way to hopefully promote them to other schools other organizations um, and just let them know the wonderful work that they do and ways that the school students and even churches can get involved uh, in the missions that they do. Well, so for our listeners, I mean, will this be an opportunity for them as well? Yeah, okay. I believe so. Yeah. I hope so. Yeah, we'll, 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 we'll see. Well, Charlie, yeah. thank you for, uh, for coming. Absolutely. Spend some time with us. How did you get involved with uh, this, this program? Yeah, in fact, I, uh, 2019, I was asked to chaperone a mission trip um, with my home parish in Mobile, Alabama, and it was through Cross Catholic Outreach. Um, at that time, I was uh, not really sure where I was going in life. I was discerning the priesthood uh, very seriously. And uh, I remember actually very vividly um, sitting in the chapel at the, the home where we, were, where we were staying for the week on the mission trip and uh, just praying, you know, Lord, I, I really, at this point, I think you're calling me to be a priest. And I'm, I'm wide open to that. But I'm not sure. And uh, in the event that you aren't, this cross-Catholic outreach group sounds pretty cool. So keep them in mind for me, you know. And uh, got to be pretty close with the staff members on the trip, stayed in touch. Even uh, probably the next, the week after the trip, I sent my resume to the trip coordinator and said, hey, if anything ever comes up, you know, let me know. He and I stayed in touch. Uh, Fast forward two years, I guess. And uh, he gave me a call one day and said, hey, I think we have a, Position. So this is 2021? Yeah, 2021. This is while the pandemic was still happening. Correct. It was actually, so fall of 2020 was when he, he called me. And uh, then I ended up starting the summer of, of 21. Yeah, June 20. So you just started, well, I'm curious now. You started discerning the priesthood in 2019? For, yeah. <laughs> well, where, can, can I ask where are you? Where are you there? Uh, oh, that God! Question. God made it very clear that He was not calling me to the priesthood. Okay, yeah. how so? Because of this uh, this agency? No, not not particularly this. Um, I think just in in 
in the phase of discernment, you know, coming to going on a discernment retreat, and for me that was that was the tipping point. You know, it became very, I mean, abundantly clear. Clear. I didn't think that kind of clarity was possible. Wow. You know? um, and so it was nice. And then you know, you leave leave the discernment retreat, and you're like, all right, I I know that he's not calling me to be a priest. And, well, what is he calling me to do, <laughs> right? So it's kind of another adventure there and discerning the next step. And uh, it, was, it was very, you know, and they came. The opportunities uh, presented themselves. Uh, and then Cross Catholic came, you know, maybe 10, 9 months later. I, I yeah. just, I, I, I've always kind of envied people who have that kind of clarity. Because yeah. I'm someone that when I make an important decision, I have to call 15 people. Mm-hmm. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> and, and then get 15 different opinions and then brood about it a little bit more. So that's good. I mean, that is clarity. Yeah. So now you're part of, of this this agency and uh, Catholic... Cross, cross Catholic, Catholic, Catholic Outreach. Cross Catholic. For some reason, I want to say Catholic Cross. <laughs> cross Catholic. So tell everybody, what do you do there? Yeah. Um, what's your primary responsibility? Well, let's start there. Yeah, I, I work primarily with parishes and schools who are looking. So do you travel all around the country or is it just in the For the most regional? part, yeah. I have a region, but my region is kind of large. <laughs> <laughs> so, is it uh, the U.S.? Is it's <laughs> not. It's not the, it's not the U.S. Uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a generous portion of the U.S. Okay, yeah. I understand. Um, so, it, you know, it keeps it interesting when, you you know, you get to... And one day you hear a, a deep, deep South Louisiana accent, and then you talk to somebody in Brooklyn and hear that accent. You know, it's really uh, kind of a melting pot each day. So, but like I said, I work primarily with parishes and schools who are looking to engage their uh, their students, their families in um, really the international outreach of of the church. Uh, and so that's through things like Box of Joy, through things like well, our Lent campaign. Well, yeah. that's, you, for, you did not know about this last year, right? Well, we knew about Boxes of Joy and then because we had done it, and then he introduced us to what he just mentioned. Because I'm just saying that we probably have some people listening that have never heard of this. Yeah, no. Right. So just walk sure. through. You're, you're in a room now. You, maybe virtually you are in a room of people who've never heard of this. Mm-hmm. Pitch it to us. What is the overall concept? And then we'll get into more of the yeah, details. Yeah, sure. What's, what's the concept? Our, our mission at Cross Catholic is to mobilize the global Catholic Church to transform the poor in their communities, both materially and spiritually. Uh, and so what that looks like for us is it's really the principle of subsidiarity is big for Explain us. That. So uh, working at the most local level as possible. And so we do not... We don't send missionaries. We don't create, you know, new ministries. Our our um, operating structure, I guess, is to work through the local church. So a lot of our mission partners is what, how we refer to them. Are you know different dioceses in Central and South America, Southeast Asia, Africa, wherever it might be, and also religious congregations, uh, missionary orders, uh, missionary groups. And uh, it's funny how, you know, over the years we've come, become connected to different ones through the providence of, of God, honestly. Um, and uh, so, yeah, that's, that's what we do. We try and, and build up the church um, in a sustainable way to where it's not just, you know, American missionaries running everything in the Diocese of Santa Rosa de Lima in Guatemala, where it's the people of the Diocese of Santa Rosa de Lima building up their own church. So are, they, are the parishes in the U.S., do you use them primarily as, re, re, uh, for lack of a better phrase, pardon me, of recruiting so that they can begin serving these smaller uh, parishes in other parts of the world? To some degree, we do have an, a lot of parishes who um, have become connected to specific projects, you know, and so they might, they might really, something about an education project, a school that we're supporting really resonates deeply with them. Okay. And so they'll say, hey, we want to commit to, you know, funding this much of this project per year, per month. Um, others others will kind of lock in with our faith in action programs, which Box of Joy is one of those. Um, it's, it's really, it's fun, honestly. I mean, part of my job is helping parishes and schools kind of discern, like, all right, how... God is calling you to serve the poor, whether you like it or not. We um, talked about that a little bit. Yeah. <laughs> yeah. Uh, you know, but how? And so it's really cool to have these different, I mean, we have 
we have uh, housing projects, water projects, uh, projects to provide food. Are education these projects, projects given to the parishes? Are, are these options? I'm just trying to get a visual of what this looks like. So if you come to uh, some general parish in Ohio, mm -hmm. are you telling them, look, these are your opportunities that you can get involved with a rock water project or, or this project? Is that what you're doing? Typically, yeah. That's okay. usually how it works. Mm -hmm. And you are already, you've already got information about these other parishes mm -hmm. that are in need of aid. Sure. And exactly. so, you're, you, so you're going to these smaller parishes to say, look, this is an opportunity for you to help this other parish mm -hmm. in another part of the world exactly. through X, Y, or Z. Yeah, and it could be oh, okay. a, it could be a parish. It could be the the social outreach of the diocese. It could be you know like the the home where where uh, we stayed in, in Guatemala on a recent mission trip. Um, it could be any projects. It's not it's not you know uh, I guess limited to that kind of sister parish um, approach. Yeah. Okay. So tell us a little bit then about what Boxes of Joy. This mm -hmm. must, is this a, a rung on the ladder or is this really the the whole purpose of what your agency does? And it's just under the umbrella of Boxes of Joy. Um, I would say it's more really Boxes of Joy is kind of the tip of the iceberg. Okay. Us. But at the same time, it accomplishes a, a big part of our mission. Um, so you know, what is it? A lot of, so Box of Joy is... It's a very simple program. It's a Christmas box program where families, uh, schools, parishes, organizations, whoever it is, will say, hey, we want to fill 25 boxes. We want to fill 100 boxes. We want to fill 500 boxes, however many they can. Uh, and they go and they shop. And the goal is to engage families and communities in meaningful service together. And so they'll say, all right, I want to, I want to shop for a seven-year-old boy. What would a seven-year-old boy want to get for Christmas? You know, and they go and they, they fill that box and they bring it in and then uh, their parish or their school coordinates to have all, the, all their boxes taken to a drop-off center. From there, they ship down to Miami where we screen them and add a rosary and a story of Jesus to each box. And from there, they ship out. Last year, they went to our mission sites in seven different countries, all in Central and South America. Uh, and they they get distributed and that's one of the best times of the year is when we start getting pictures and videos back from our mission partners you know uh, thanking us and thanking everyone who filled the boxes and showing the smiles you know that come and and, and people might say you know well why spend expend all of this energy and effort on just a box with some toys in it you know and there is a kind of a point there you know why don't you use that for more homes or more water projects, um, and yes, uh, you know, there's there's definitely a, I, I understand the thinking, but at the same time, according to Pope Saint John Paul II, the three principles of Catholic social teaching are subsidiarity, solidarity, and dignity, and he said dignity is the biggest one, and to restore dignity to 106,000 children last year by showing them that there is someone who they don't know who cares for them uh, and, and went through, took the time to pack a beautiful gift box for them to receive on Christmas. Um, I don't know if you can put a price on that. And I think we underestimate, and I remember hearing these kinds of uh, comments in my years of being a, a non-Catholic pastor. I was a Methodist pastor. And, um, well, you know, if you're going to, the, the money could have been spent on uh, clothes for the children, food for the children. But isn't there something to be said that God created a child to play? Yeah. Mm. And that a part of being a child is to have something to play with. Mm -hmm. And that a toy for a child is as essential yeah. um, as, as food or, or clothing. Does that, does that make sense? Yeah. I mean, no. it's something we often uh, overlook. Yeah, for sure. And I think what I appreciated most about Boxes of Joy versus I know there's other organizations that do very similar things. Um, but what he said, you know, before they send out all the boxes, they put in a rosary and the story of Jesus. And if I'm correct, families can put in their own religious mm -hmm. artifacts as well. So you can put in you know, maybe a coloring book of the Sacred Heart or, you know, a tiny saint or something. Whereas other programs, you know, you're not allowed to have religious articles and you're not allowed this and you're not allowed mm -hmm. to have that. And there's a huge list of things you're not allowed to put in it. So I think 
you know, in addition to giving children a toy, uh, giving them joy, you are also exposing them to Jesus. You're exposing them to a saint. You're exposing them to the gospel, and it's through a tiny box, and you don't know, you know, maybe they get a, a a toy of a, a saint and they learn about it and that becomes you know a saint that they start praying to for an intercession and you just don't know where things like that are going to take that one mm -hmm. child and so i think that's kind of what drew at least us more to using cross catholic outreach and boxes of joy versus you know there's plenty of other organizations that do christmas boxes for poor children did uh, the, so did the school participate in this last year yes okay tell us uh, what was the time frame when did it begin? Around Christmas. So we did the same thing. So the teacher that led it, I think her church was the one she was the donation site. So our students uh, all do got boxes. Uh, they all donated items, made their boxes, and then the beta club uh, put them together, put them in her car, and then she drove them down uh, to her church. And that's where she donated them for it to be shipped down to. Will that happen again this year yes. in the school? Yeah. Okay, so when is, so for our listeners, and I'm curious as well, when will this begin in earnest? When can people start bringing in their boxes and will they be given guidelines about what to place in the boxes? <laughs> yes. Okay, so when, yes. When, 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 we'll, go, we'll go into that. Uh, so when will this begin really in, in earnest? Yeah. yeah. So I put in our request for the boxes. So mm -hmm. when about do they sh the empty ones show up? Generally, within I, about uh, two weeks, max. Okay. Yeah. Okay, so ours should show up probably by the end of September. Okay, so um, this is really around the corner. Yes, and ah. what I've done is I've ordered one per family. We're really trying to uh, promote family activities, and we know that it would be a lot for families who have six plus children to say, oh, every child in your family needs to make a box. Uh, we know that can be kind of costly. So the focus is so as a family, make a box for this child. Uh, so we've ordered 109 boxes because according to our fax family portal, that's how many families we have. But uh, if I'm correct, the church could also participate yeah, in oh, our boxes as mm -hmm. well. So this is something that we can see if any families in the church are interested in order boxes for the church also, and then make a, a combined effort. So the boxes come to us and we yeah. fill them. They're flat cardboard boxes, and you assemble them. It's, it's very similar. Um, uh, correct me if I'm wrong. It's very similar to, is it Samaritan's Purse? Um, the Operation Franklin, Christmas yeah, Child. Uh, Operation mm -hmm. Christmas Child. It yeah. sounds very similar to mm -hmm. that. Am I yeah. right in saying a lot so? Of, yeah, a lot, especially around Charlotte, a lot of people, y'all are the Catholic Operation Christmas Child. <laughs> yes, I, I don't think, I don't think um, Samaritan's Purse is, I mean, Operation Christmas Child, I don't think they'd be putting rosaries in the boxes, but uh, nevertheless, the, the concept is very similar. <laughs> yes, yes, and that's what I would say. I mean, literally the same concept, but... I'm pretty sure I've read because I used to do Operation Christmas Child all the time. I think it does specifically say, at least the last time I checked, but they don't really like for religious articles to be put in their boxes. So, Well, we're going to change that. Yeah, we're going to change <laughs> that. So I could be wrong, but I just remember the last time I did an Operation Christmas Child box, there were a lot of restrictions. Well, how do you determine the child? Um, uh, there's a seven-year-old child are you just is the agency just saying well we want toys for a seven-year-old we don't know who the seven-year-old is or, have, they, or mm -hmm. have all these children have already been identified no no so the, we will send you know so many boxes to each mission partner and now you know depending on on how many children they have in their school or parish whatever it may be and the the way that the you know shopping for one specific child uh, you choose boy or girl, and then you choose one of the three age ranges. It's on the box. Yeah. And so you just mark that right there on the box, and once they come through the screening center, they all get sorted. And so on, you know, makes it really easy on uh, distribution day. You know, you have the, you know, seven-year-olds, seven-year-old boys line up here, girls over here, you know, um, to make it cleaner. That way you don't have a 12-year-old boy opening a, a box meant for a four-year-old girl, you know, because usually doesn't go over well. You know, tiaras <laughs> don't really work out for 12-year-old totally boys. Totally. So. <laughs> sure, yeah, sure. Well, then how do we know what to put in the boxes? And tell us some things not to put in that I'm sure you've probably <laughs> seen before. Yeah, um, what to put in, 
Um, we actually have a, a like a gift idea list that we okay. always send out. It's available on the website. Um, toys, things like stuffed animals are great. Shirts, clothing, uh, anything like that. Hygiene items are great too. Um, hairbrushes, girls love hairbrushes, oh, don't right. they? Um, and that kind of stuff. I think to me with a family, if a family is participating, the best way to do it is, you know, if, if there's a eight year old girl in the family, well, what would you want? Mm -hmm. You know, what would you want? Go to the dollar store and pick out, you know, six, five, six things that you would want um, and fill that box so that you can be the one giving this gift to this child. Uh, what not to put? There's uh, some funny stories um, from that. Don't put saw blades in the boxes. <laughs> um, you know, n anything sharp, you, you know. You had um, someone put saw blades in a box? Uh, one, yeah, we did. For children? Yeah, I don't, I'm not sure exactly. I don't know. I don't know the details of it, but it was a... <laughs> they didn't get delivered, I can say that. Um, you know, another... another, And this is a common one, uh, you know, is a common kind of misconception is gift cards. Mm. You know, um, we had a... Uh, softball coach who's a big big box of joy supporters say you know I, I had to explain to some people that America may run on Duncan but you know southern Haiti doesn't you know so <laughs> Duncan down at, exactly Duncan down and, and it's all right you know people yeah, it's fine well, that's why we have the screening center you know and so we we try not to put a lot of pressure on mm -hmm. on anyone participating you know to think oh is this gonna be all right is this gonna be all right you know uh, if it when in doubt send it you know and if, if we think it shouldn't go we'll, we'll take it out at the screening center and we'll donate it locally you know that's what we have a we have a box that'll um, go to that sort of thing well you know you you said that you you oversee a large region mm -hmm. uh, of the u.s can you think of a parish that was is probably your your best success story a parish that really just did a phenomenal work Man. in this and what did it look like yeah uh, there's a there's a lot that come to mind um i think I think for um, locate pro proximity's sake, uh, St. Gregory the Great in Bluffton, South Carolina, um, as well as the surrounding parishes, St. Peter's there, uh, and St. Francis by the Sea in Hilton Head. Um, that that uh, area down in Low Country, South Carolina, has has done an incredible job with Box of Joy. Upstate South Carolina as well. St. Mary Magdalene was the drop-off center there last year. And I think I think we had over 1,600 boxes of joy from the participating parishes and schools there in upstate South Carolina last year, uh, which was, uh, I mean, I think it was maybe 300 the year before. Wow. You know? So it went from 300 to 1,600. Mm -hmm. Wow. Yeah. And, you know, just to see, and that wasn't even... I don't know, I can't think off the top of my head what percentage of parishes and schools participated, but it wasn't 100%, you know. And just to see that, man, uh, the impact that that has, you know, that, that's 1,600 children who otherwise would not have received a Christmas gift. Mm -hmm. um, and so, uh, again, that's part of, our, part of our mission depends on showing people the impact that they have. Um, you know, that something that seems very simple, filling a, a box with some toys, really does have a massive impact on the lives of some of these children. Are there stories? I mean, if I'm someone who contributes to the cause here and mm -hmm. brings a box, will I ever find out what happens to that box? Not that specific box. Unfortunately, we're, we're you know, hopefully we'll be able to get to that point. We need an app. But, you know, we can try yeah, it's a box the tracker. Box. Yeah, that would be cool. A little yeah. camera inside the um, box. You can um, automatically yeah. see the kid's yeah. reaction when it yeah. pops over. But we do try, we try our best to report. In fact, we, we have, you know, uh, a 2021 Box of Joy update that will go out. You know, so you'll be able to see, we you know, the this year we blessed a hun over 106,000 children in these countries. Um, you know, here's a picture Here's a video of, you know, some children opening their boxes. Here's a picture of a thank you card, you know, that they sent back, that the children made in their classes, you know. Um, things like that because it is, to us, you know, stewardship uh, is something that we talk a lot about. It's one of our core values, excellence and stewardship. And that's more than just excellence in uh, allocating the funds that, that people entrust to us. 
it's also excellence in allocating these stories of, of grace and God's grace that we receive, you know, and being able, able to share those with, with the people who made it happen um, is, is just as important. You said that there were uh, mission partners mm-hmm. who do the screening. Are these partners already located on the ground in these countries? Well, the mission partners wouldn't be doing, wouldn't be screening the boxes. Okay. Yeah, the boxes are all screened before they before they ship to our mission partners. Well, I guess my question is that do you have people on the ground in these countries who are doing what you're doing? I mean, they they, they work for the same agency. Does that exist? You mean cross Catholic employees? Yes. Not really. It's you know, it's it's not really our model. Um, usually, the you know the people we work with on the ground, our mission partners, are employed. Well, I guess I guess my question then is accountability. Then mm-hmm. it's the sure. accountability oh, yeah. question. So if I'm going to contribute to this, uh, how can I be sure that it's going to go to the children for which I intended the box? Absolutely. Yeah, and that's it. Again, it comes back to stewardship. You know, and <laughs> and. Uh, it is. It's. It, it's a. It's not an easy job to, to have that uh, assurance, mm-hmm. you know. But it is something that our our project officers who oversee the projects in different countries. They, you know, similar to how I have a region. They often have you know, a, a one or a handful of countries, depending on, on how prevalent or how many projects we have in those countries, and that's their job. And they they really do a great job of explaining to our mission partners the need for reporting, you know, and, and helping. And it's also a blessing to them, you know, to have that um, have that uh, kind of encouragement towards being accountable, you know. I mean, it's not something we work. Our mission partners are saints. I mean, you know, it's that's, that's just the reality of it, you know. Uh, and to any time you get any... Uh, exposure to them, able to meet them, um, is is a grace, you know. But of course, that there's always the risk of that. There's always the risk of uh, somebody going rogue, I guess. Mm-hmm. But um, it's something that is very important to us. Um, we we take it as a sacred responsibility when anyone gives, um, be it a box of joy or you know a, a monetary donation, and so. You know, not saying that we can always avoid those those situations, but um, it's a, it's a problem that we well, it's not a problem, I would say, but something that we're very vigilant um, for. You know. Well, you said that Cross Catholic was bigger than just even the boxes. Uh, you know, mm-hmm. that a parish could get involved in other projects mm-hmm. for other parishes uh, in Central America, for instance, mm-hmm. water projects. You mentioned in one. Well, how, how could a parish get involved with something other than just the boxes of joy? Yeah, um, however they want. <laughs> you know, uh, that's and like I like I mentioned before, that's part of my uh, part of my role is to help them. You know, find out you know how how God's calling them to serve the poor, um, and it you know it's kind of interesting. Some some parishes just. Something about water projects resonates deeply with them. Mm-hmm. Other parishes, it's it's a providing homes for families. You know, other other parishes or, or schools or dioceses, it's you know providing salaries for school teachers, um, and it, it's really a cool thing to see how all of it kind of works together. You know, um, for us to accomplish our goals with our projects and and continue to support and facilitate growth. With our mission partners. Well, can you think of? Uh, you mentioned the the parish in South Carolina that did a great job with the. Uh, they had a great response to the boxes of joy. Well, when it comes to these other endeavors, mm-hmm. what are some success stories out there that uh, where you have seen people's lives change on the ground in Central America mm-hmm. as a result of a partnership with uh, an American parish, well, with their parish? Oh yeah, I think I, I think the one that immediately comes to mind because they're actually headed to, on a mission trip next month is a parish out in California who we've been working with for many years now and the impact that they have had uh, in the diocese where they, that has really stolen their heart um, has been tremendous. They, uh, they st- I'm not sure how they started working with us but over the years they've funded a new chapel they went on a mission trip and were celebrating mass in the the chapel 
that was there at the time. And the priest, who's the pastor of the parish, said, no way. We're going to find a way to build them a new chapel. And they did. Um, and right now, they're actually, in fact, I was just in Guatemala in August, and we were working on the land for another chapel yeah. that they are that they're sponsoring. Um, because you go to you know some of these communities where they only get mass once every four or six weeks, mm-hmm. just starved of the sacraments, um, and and also just starved of of, of a beautiful worship space. You know um, that I think is often maybe taken for granted, you know, by, by people here in the States, beautiful churches, you know, that really draw you into the presence of God. Uh, and so that's something that they really love providing. Uh, more than, more so than that, I think they may, I don't know how many total meals, I don't want to, I don't want to overshoot it, but they do our food packing events, um, sometimes multiple times a year. And I think in the last year they've packed over 300,000 meals for the poor. Just and that one diocese. Just, just that one parish. Oh, that one parish. <laughs> yeah. Wow. Um, you know, but there's 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 a bunch of other examples. Um, you know, the the parish who I just went down to Guatemala with has really um, kind of developed a, something about the the mission, our missions, our projects in the diocese of Santa Rosa have really resonated deeply with them. Uh, they've helped get them and get the sisters a new truck. Um, when their when their old one broke down and they had no way to transport themselves around, they had no way to get into town to get to market, and their community depends on them for for the food. Um, they helped do you know a lot of things just locally right there in that diocese, um, and then interestingly enough, from that you know kind of a uh, different groups from the same diocese, archdiocese of Mobile. Have also kind of taken a you know a liking something about that diocese has really resonated with several groups there. So there's there's homes you know families are, are now living in sturdy safe homes because of different groups there. There's a high school in Montgomery who's going on a mission trip and uh, uh, spring break this coming spring break uh, who I mean have done an incredible job you know um, supporting and not it's funny a lot of people think. Or maybe led to think that oh you know we're not we're not rich we can't do anything, um, you know and that's a uh, you know I under I understand the the uh, the fear there but um, there's groups that they can they can get all the money together in three days there's groups that it takes three years and you know you see kind of this the grace of the widow's might there you mm-hmm. know where. A smaller, smaller parish really says, "We we want to do this. We want to rally together. We want to get behind this, and we want to have this impact." And it is such a beautiful thing when it happens. Um, so yeah, I could I could go on for a while <laughs> about the awesome parishes and schools and people who I've been, I and my uh, my team have been blessed to work with. Yeah, this 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 will probably be my last uh, big question that just reminds me of uh, about five years ago there was a book maybe it's been uh, less or a little bit more than five years a book whose author I cannot remember Uh, (laughs) but the book the title of the book was called Toxic Charity Hmm. are you familiar with the book? I'm not well the whole premise was that he says we know we have to get away from this idea of religious tourism he says so much the 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 model of mission uh, in the church was we're gonna send a delegation of predominantly white affluent Americans into these poor countries, they'll look around. Mm-hmm. They'll they'll do some things for the for the people there, and then they'll fly back home and they'll feel better about themselves yeah. as a result. And he says that's religious tourism. That's mm-hmm. not necessarily mission work. Yeah. And and that we need to get into a a model of mission. This was his overall argument of how do you empower the people on the ground mm-hmm. in these poor countries to pr- help provide for themselves? Yeah. Because they, I think his argument was that you we have unintentionally mm-hmm. created a legacy of unemployment. Mm-hmm. There's no incentive mm-hmm. uh, for the, the men and women in the area to actually try to find jobs because there's a delegation flying from the United States here to kind mm-hmm. of do the work for us. How is this agency then not a form? And I'm yeah. not saying that it is. Sure. But for, for the sake of our listeners, I mean, how are we helping the people on the ground and empowering them yeah. 
uh, on the ground in these well, areas? I think to start empowering, that is one of our core values. Okay. And it, it's crucial to, to you know, our approach in serving the poor. Um, and, you know, really as a, as a charity, the goal is, is kind of to put yourself out of business. Right. You know, so I mean, that is the point yeah. of charity. Yeah. Like, we yeah. should not exist. Yeah. Right. I mean, it's really interesting In that we world. have that, yeah. that, that that charity even exists. Yeah. As a category, as a concept, is problematic, really, from mm -hmm. from the side of heaven. Yeah. You know, right. <laughs> right. That, that, this yeah. is an issue. You know, nobody. We should not. We should have a world in which there is no charity. Yeah. Yeah. But go. I'm sorry. I'm yeah. No. Right. No. It's great. And, but and I, I like that idea that we should, we're trying to put ourselves out of business. Yeah. And I think the. Um, well, maybe an example would be good. We we work with. A, a mission in Haiti we worked with for for many years we've had a relationship with the, the priest there and he has I mean the transformation that has occurred in this community is tremendous when he first started his mission the bishop referred to the area as the darkest corner of his diocese um, the predominant religion was voodoo everyone was practicing voodoo I mean he he set up and he got to work and now, fast forward 15, 20 years, he has a thriving Catholic community. Two Catholic schools, they had to build another one because the first one was not big enough. Um, he has programs for the elderly feeding programs. Uh, he has construction crews where when you know, a, a parish decides, hey, you know, for Christmas this year, we wanna, we wanna provide a family with a home. Mm -hmm. um, that all the money that goes into that home right, that there's money that's allocated for the labor is not being outsourced, but is staying in, within the community. So not only is there a, a family with a sturdy, safe new home, but there's also, uh, you know, laborers who are paid justly for this good, dignified work that they've yeah. been trained to do. Yeah, yeah that's, that's, that's great. You're helping the local economy. Exactly. And that's subsidiary. Mm -hmm. yeah, that, that, that decisions are best made at the local level. Now, this is great. So um, how can people then listening, they want to contribute to the boxes of joy. Mm -hmm. They want to buy toys for someone who's seven or six. What's their first step? How can they get involved in this? I would say talk to her, but, I don't, <laughs> <laughs> but she's busy. Right <laughs> yeah, um, I, I think, you know, get together and organize something um, and, and reach out to me, you know, and I'm, I'm more than happy to facilitate that for the parish. See Citer at crosscatholic.org. That's C-S-E-I-T-E-R at crosscatholic.org. And then they, you can hook them up with a box if they'd like to get, contribute mm -hmm. to this. And this and is happening get, at the end of September. Yeah, that's when we'll get. So I think um, we have allocated the first Friday in October to put together um, to try to kick it off, okay. um, give the kids the boxes, and then hopefully by the first Friday of November, that's when they'll all come back to us and be shipped. So, I mean, really, the boxes are assembled within the families. I mean, they'll just be given back to us, and I guess we'll do a pre-screening for the pre-screeners. <laughs> you know, just make sure that they're nice and neat and the kids tidy them up. Um, but yeah, essentially this happens in, in the family home. They put it all together. Uh, so it'll be a family project and it'll happen before Advent probably starts or right around the time because I believe you guys need them down there in time to ship everything off in time for Christmas. Yeah, so yeah. Right. The, so the um, yeah, Box of Joy Week is yeah. when all of the boxes are taken to the drop-off centers and that's from the first Saturday in November to the second Sunday. In November, so first weekend to second weekend. And what is the website for your uh, for your agency? Crosscatholic.org. Okay, yeah, so and then, people can and then slash box of joy will take you to the box of joy website. Mm -hmm. But you can even you can navigate to it from crosscatholic.org. Okay, well, thank you for joining us. Absolutely, uh, I think it's a, uh, sounds like a phenomenal uh, endeavor. Yeah, I'm glad the school is participating. We're having invite you as uh, our listeners and ears, watchers, to uh, participate in this as well. Thank you, Charlotte, for being a part of this podcast. Yeah, absolutely, thank you for having me. It's been it's really been a joy to uh, get to know St. Mike's a little bit uh, with with Michelle and Father Rossi, especially. So it's always good to be up here. Oh, great! Well, we're glad to have you, and thank you all for listening and for watching. If you want more information about our parish, please visit our website at stmccg.org. And if you'd like to contact me, Shane, look for my email address on the website as well. So on behalf of Father Rossi, who's not here. <laughs>
And on behalf of Principal Bowman, who is, I am Shane Page, your host. Until next time, God bless you.